It's one of those questions that sounds simple, but hides a very deep story behind it. Because when we think about advanced military aircraft, we often imagine screaming jet engines, the thunder of sonic booms, and machines slicing through the sky faster than sound itself. Yet the B-2 Spirit, one of the most secretive, most expensive, and most advanced bombers ever built, doesn't break the sound barrier. In fact, it was never designed to, and that's not a flaw. It's a choice, a deliberate, carefully engineered decision that defines exactly what kind of weapon the B-2 Spirit really is. So today, let's slow down for a few minutes and explore why one of the deadliest aircraft on the planet actually moves slower than you might expect and why in modern warfare, silence can be far deadlier than speed. Let's begin with the mission. The B-2 Spirit was never meant to fight like a fighter jet. It was designed for something far more demanding, to fly deep into enemy territory across thousands of miles, penetrate the world's most heavily defended airspace, deliver nuclear or precision guided bombs, and return home, all without anyone ever realizing it was there. That word, uh, without being seen, is the key. The B-2 isn't about being fast, it's about being invisible. You see, every aircraft in history is a balance of trade-offs. Engineers can make something faster, but it might become louder, hotter, easier to detect, or less efficient. The B-2's creators at Northrop Grumman faced one of the hardest trade-offs in aviation history. Do we chase raw speed, or do we chase pure stealth? They chose stealth. Every curve, every surface, every angle of the B-2 was optimized for one thing, to minimize detection by radar, infrared sensors, and even the human eye. So uh, let's talk about what that actually means. When radar waves hit an aircraft, they bounce back, revealing its position. The bigger or sharper the surface, the easier it is to spot. The B-2's shape, that smooth flying wing, is designed to scatter radar waves away from the source. Its entire surface is coated with radar-absorbing materials. Even the engines are hidden deep inside the body, with air intakes that twist and turn to keep radar from reaching the metal fan blades inside. This flying wing design makes it one of the most radar-invisible aircraft ever made. But it also comes with a big cost. That shape is terrible for supersonic flight. You see, to fly faster than sound, that's Mach 1, or about 1,225 kilometers per hour at sea level. An aircraft needs a very specific aerodynamic design. It needs a long, narrow fuselage to slice through shock waves, thin swept wings to handle wave drag, and strong materials to survive the heat generated by air compression. The B-2's giant, wide, curved wings are perfect for generating lift and fuel efficiency. But at supersonic speeds, that same shape would produce massive drag, stress, and turbulence. The stealthy surface coatings would overheat and peel off. The very shape that makes it invisible would suddenly become unstable. So the question engineers faced wasn't, can we make it supersonic? Of course they could. It was, can we keep it stealthy if we make it supersonic? The answer was no. Then comes the issue of engines. The B-2 Spirit uses four General Electric F-118GE 100 engines. They are powerful, efficient, and quiet, but they don't have afterburners. If you've ever seen a fighter jet at night with a bright flame shooting out the back, that's the afterburner. It injects extra fuel into the exhaust stream to create a huge burst of thrust, allowing the jet to reach and sustain supersonic speeds. But it comes with a huge price. It burns an enormous amount of fuel, produces extreme heat, and glows like a beacon on infrared sensors. That's the exact opposite of what a stealth bomber wants. If the B-2 had afterburners, its infrared signature, the heat it emits, would skyrocket. It would become visible to heat tracking missiles and sensors. And since it's designed to stay hidden from every kind of detection, those afterburners were never even considered. The engines are deeply buried inside the body and the exhaust is cooled and flattened before being released, all to minimize the heat trail behind the aircraft. So again, it's not that the B-2 couldn't be made supersonic. It's that every system, every material, and every design decision actively avoids the things you'd need to go that fast. Then there's fuel efficiency, a boring but critical reason. 
the B-2 can fly more than 11,000 kilometers on a single tank. That's enough to go from the continental United States to the other side of the world and back with in-flight refueling. To achieve that kind of range, the aircraft needs to be extremely fuel efficient. Supersonic flight, however, is the complete opposite of fuel efficiency. Once you cross the sound barrier, air resistance increases dramatically. You need far more thrust to maintain speed, meaning far more fuel. If the B-2 were supersonic, it would burn through its tanks in a fraction of the time. That means shorter range, fewer targets reached, and less strategic flexibility. For a stealth bomber that's supposed to strike anywhere on the planet, that trade-off makes no sense. And here's another point that often gets overlooked. In modern warfare, speed doesn't always mean safety. Yes, flying fast means you can reach a target quickly or escape a threat faster. But if the enemy can see you coming, speed alone might not save you. Surface-to-air missiles can travel several times the speed of sound, and radar networks can track you long before you're close enough to attack. But stealth changes the entire game. If the enemy can't even detect you, they can't aim at you, can't launch missiles at you, can't even react to you. So while a supersonic bomber races against radar, a stealth bomber like the B-2 simply bypasses it. It's the difference between fighting a storm and walking through it unseen. The best way to survive isn't to be faster, like, it's to be invisible. Let's imagine this for a moment. You're in an air defense bunker somewhere on Earth. It's midnight. The radar screens are sweeping, the air is calm, and the systems show nothing unusual. Then in the distance, a series of explosions rip through a high-value target, a command post, a missile silo, a communication hub. By the time you realize what's happened, the bomber responsible is already hundreds of kilometers away, silently fading into the darkness of the upper atmosphere. That's the B-2 spirit. It doesn't roar in, it doesn't announce itself, it simply appears, delivers its payload, and disappears again, like, like a ghost. That's the power of stealth over speed. Now let's talk about what it actually can do. The B-2 flies at high subsonic speeds, about max 0.95, roughly 1,010 kilometers per hour at altitude. It can reach 50,000 feet and fly halfway across the globe without refueling. It can carry up to 18 tons of ordnance, including nuclear bombs, GPS-guided JDAMs, and even next-generation smart munitions. Its radar cross-section, basically how big it looks on a radar screen, is said to be about the size of a small bird. That's how stealthy it is. So while it's not supersonic, it doesn't need to be. Its speed is in its invisibility. Now, what would happen if engineers had tried to make it supersonic? They'd need to redesign the entire airframe. Thinner wings, longer body, sharper angles. That would immediately ruin the stealth profile. They'd need stronger materials to handle heat, heavier fuel tanks to sustain high-speed flight, and after-burning engines that glow hot enough to betray its position to any satellite or infrared detector. All that for what? maybe an extra few hundred kilometers per hour, so, but at the cost of the very thing that makes it valuable, its stealth. In modern air warfare, detection means death, and the B-2 was built to live. There's also the matter of maintenance. The B-2's stealth coating, that special black radar absorbent skin, is extremely sensitive. It's part of what makes the plane nearly invisible, but it also requires constant care. If the aircraft flew supersonic, the friction and heat of the air would wear down that coating fast. Maintenance time and cost would skyrocket. As it is, each B-2 already requires thousands of hours of maintenance per flight hour. Making it supersonic would make upkeep practically impossible. So now you see the logic. Everything about the B-2 spirit is a lesson in compromise, a balance of what to prioritize and what to sacrifice. The designers knew they could make a fast bomber, or they could make an invisible bomber, but they couldn't make both. And when you're carrying the world's most powerful weapons into the most dangerous skies, invisibility wins every time. That's why the B-2 Spirit flies below Mach 1. It's not because it can't go faster, it's because it doesn't need to. Now, some might argue, but what about the future? What about next generation stealth bombers like the upcoming B-21 Raider? Could they combine both stealth and supersonic speed? Possibly, but even then, stealth will likely remain the primary goal.
The physics of air, radar, and heat make true supersonic stealth incredibly difficult. You can reduce detection, yes, but you can't erase the physics of shock waves or thermal radiation. So until materials and propulsion technologies change dramatically, subsonic stealth will remain the gold standard for strategic bombers. In the end, the B-2 spirit proves a powerful point. Sometimes power isn't about being the fastest or the loudest or the most aggressive. Sometimes power is about patience, precision, and presence without notice. The B-2 doesn't race across the sky. It haunts it. It doesn't fight for attention. It disappears into it. And when the mission is done and the target destroyed and the radar screens still show nothing, that's when you realize the true power of stealth. So next time someone asks you, why isn't the B-2 stealth bomber supersonic?